Hello, I'm Andy Trotman, Head of News at Microsoft UK, and I'd like to welcome you today to this Cyber UK 2021 session. Today, we're talking about cybersecurity as the foundation for the UK's digital transformation. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Perkins, Public Sector Lead at Microsoft UK, to discuss the trends we're seeing in cybersecurity, as well as the challenges and opportunities that face us as we return to the hybrid workplace and Microsoft's vision for cybersecurity in the new world of work. I'll then be talking to Peter Cooper, Deputy Director of Cyber Defence at the Government Security Group. Chris, thank you for joining me today. Oh, Andy, thank you very much Steve, for the opportunity. It's great to be here. Can you start off by telling us a little bit more about your role at Microsoft? Yes, of course. So uh, I lead the public sector business at Microsoft here in the UK. Um, our mission as a company, of course, is to empower every person and every organisation on the planet to achieve more. But right now in UK public sector, our focus is on how we support economic recovery and how we accelerate digital government uh, by providing sustainable and inclusive services to UK citizens. We're really focused on forging deep connections and partnership with customers right across government, health and education to enable their digital transformation. Thanks, Chris. Having been at the forefront of supporting customers in what has been a very challenging year for us all, what would you say have been the key trends and challenges for UK organisations? Well, the challenges, as you say, that security leaders are facing at the moment are, are vast, you know, but there are a few things I would call out from, from what I've seen. You know, perhaps the most pressing was the need to rapidly secure access and identity across a hybrid working environment. You know, organisations across the UK had to swiftly retool employees and roll out virtual environments practically overnight. You're tasked with the challenge of securing a dispersed workforce while trying not to compromise productivity or user experience. Then, of course, you have cybercrime, which is the reason we're all here at this event. I mean, cyber attacks are becoming ever more sophisticated and frequent with a 300% increase in identity attacks in 2020 and you know, a huge opportunity for cyber criminals uh, fostering you know, fear mongering around COVID-19. You know, the motives and methods are evolving and automating and the cost of a data breach you know, continues to be a huge financial risk. So you have the need to secure the expanding security perimeter, protect your data and organisation from attacks and ensure you're meeting required regulations. So yeah, in order to do this uh, successfully, you, know, you need a, a skilled and diverse cyber team. And, and that's probably the, the final challenge that I would mention. Yeah, the UK is facing a significant security skills gap. Uh, and 43% of organisations say they're finding it hard to fill vacancies. And 30% of businesses are you know, having reported a lack of critical skills, such as security architecture and, and testing. You know, skills is top of the agenda. And leaders yeah, should be investing in sourcing and skilling the right talent to build a resilient cyber team. With all that in mind, how can UK organisations become more resilient as they move forward? I think um, you know, COVID-19 has yeah, it really accelerated the need for digital transformation with many organisations moving their employees to working from home, you know, whilst also rapidly changing their business models. So this new hybrid way of working has become the new normal for many. And you know, we see security as the key enabler in making this model successful whilst ensuring customers have trust. That starts with implementing a zero trust approach, yeah, assuming breach, yeah, verifying explicitly and using least privilege access. Yeah, if we look at solar winds and the, the nobilium impact, yeah, we were able to exercise what we call blast radius limitation, yeah, visibility and rapid recovery that was only possible because we adopted a zero trust mindset throughout the organisation. Mm. Really interesting. Um, obviously, cybersecurity is a major uh, consideration for Microsoft. What's the company's vision um, for the future with regards to cybersecurity and how are we supporting our customers and partners through this next wave of change? Yeah, well, I guess our, our vision and mission at Microsoft is to uh, empower everyone and every organisation to achieve more. And as we reflect on the past year or so, we really, you know, what we want to do is support our customers and partners in in building back better. Uh, you know, we as organisational leaders, you know, have to take the learnings of the last year and build an integrated and inclusive uh, strategy for what um, will be the hybrid environment. And really, yeah, security is at the heart of that strategy. You know, it's fundamentally the enabler for business change. You know, if you can get our security strategy right, then we'll 
find will be more agile, more competitive, more innovative, and ultimately be able to build trust with our customers. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me today, Chris, to talk uh, about the incredibly important issue of cybersecurity. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to bring in Pete Cooper now, Deputy Director of Cyber Defence at the Government Security Group, to get his thoughts on cybersecurity. Thanks for joining me today, Pete. No, and uh, thank you very much for having me. I'd like to kick off by asking you, how has the move to remote working impacted security postures? If we think about the scale of the challenge, it was huge. We over pretty much overnight, it changed how many organizations did, did business. So we think about the urgency, the rapid change and complexity of the demands placed on the IT estate to support the new business norm of remote working. Um, it was a huge challenge. Cybersecurity and the security postures of the organization are, are, intrinsic, are, are fully linked to, to what the organization is doing from, its, from, its, um, from a business perspective. So it's hard enough as it is when the situation is static. With all of that change, it then puts huge pressures on the cybersecurity teams to stay ahead of that change and also stay ahead of the threats. Because the threat actors, all the way through this entire, um, entire situation that we've had with, with COVID, we've, we've seen that they're continuing to take every single opportunity they can to exploit every single weakness, and they will do it quickly whenever they spot that weakness. It's, it's that perfect storm of the financial challenges, the multiple risks, the cacophony of noise and pressures on all of the teams that go across all of that. And in the middle of all of this, we've got to be maintaining the cybersecurity postures that, that we know keeps the organization secure. So the impact that it's had in the organizations has been actually, I think we've all seen, have been actually really quite good in the, the way a lot of organizations have responded to it. But now we're looking at that position now of trying to reposition those defenses where we've got organizations that are looking to come partly back into the workplace and actually looking at what this hybrid working model looks like. So wherever we were on our, on our sort of security postures, we're now having to all sort of re-examine them, go back and check our assumptions again, and again, try to stay ahead of those threats and, and actually keep, keep securing the business in the way that, that we need to secure those businesses. And where do you feel that organizations need to invest their time to address cybersecurity challenges? It's how do you make sure that um, we make cybersecurity risk something that's appropriately understood at every single level of the organization and, and creating the ability and time to be able to talk about, understand, appropriately escalate and manage that risk is, is, is really critical. And it's not something that happens, that happens by accident. It's something that takes time and effort by everybody inside that, inside that organization that has, that has a, a key part to play in the cybersecurity of that organization, whether it's managing the risk or owning the risk. So you've got to have the ability to talk about it, understand it, escalate it and manage it. And actually, how do you do that as an organization at scale and also not lose the message so you can make the right priority calls um, and making sure you've got the right information flow between the person that has seen or discovered the risk and make sure that that flow is as easy as possible to get that knowledge up through the risk management process to that risk owner. So it's really trying to make sure that as an organization, you've got one perspective of the risk that you're facing and actually one understanding of how you're tackling it and you know the pathway that you're on. That's a great point to end on, Pete. But before we wrap up, is there anything you wanted to add about what our audience can do to stay safe online? For, for me, it's all of that sort of like day-to-day -day activity that you do as an organization to keep yourself ahead of the adversary, understanding and protecting your estate. Um, when you think about sort of hygiene, um, uh, hygiene routine generally, so washing your hands, brushing your teeth. It's, it's the routine that keeps us ahead of the threats and out of the, out of the dentist. I think the really key thing for me is, is have the conversations about cybersecurity um, in your organizations and, and, have those, and have those conversations across the, across the organization, out in the community, in the private sector, in the research communities. There's a whole great bunch of people out there that are willing to help and uh, it's great to have those conversations. That keeps us ahead of the adversaries and we get to a great place in the future. That's great advice. I want to thank Chris and Pete for joining me today for a brilliant chat about cybersecurity. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us.